For this problem, what we are going to do is try to write the force F1 and F2 in the vector form. So let's take a look at the F1 first. So you can see the angle 30 here is not directly to the axis. So which means we only had some angle to the plane. So whenever we had angle to plane means we are going to have a double projection. So what is a double projection means I will show you. So now let's take a look. So now you can see we had a force 600 Newton going this way. This is our F1 600 Newton. So now let's take a look at the triangle here. So what we are going to do is try to project the, f the line to the xy plane. So we are going to draw a line parallel to the z-axis here. And we are going to know this line is going to be perpendicular to any line in the xy plane. So that's perpendicular. So now let's take a look. What is the length for this blue line? We have to use a similar triangle. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. You can see 3, 4, 5. And this is a big 3, 4, 5 triangle. So which means the length of the blue line here is going to be 600 the hypotenuse multiply 4 over 5. Is that right? So now let's take a look at this blue line. Is this blue line on the x-axis, on the y-axis? No, it's only in the xy plane, right? So we have to find the x component. So that's going to be i hat. y component, that's going to be j hat. However, this blue line is neither on the x or the y axis. So what we are going to do, we are going to project one more time to the x, y axis. So now let's see if I try to draw a line parallel to the y axis, you can see x and y is always perpendicular, right? So now what's this angle? From the picture we can see this is 30 degree. And let's take a look at here. What is the red line I am showing here? That's going to be the x components, right? So now, what is the value for the red line here? It will be the blue line, the hypotenuse, multiply cosine third. So which means if we were trying to write the force one in the vector form. So the i hat will be 600 4 over 5 cosine 30 degree i hat. So what is the j hat? It's actually going to be the red dash line here. So we have to watch one more thing. When we project from here to the blue line, and then when we project to the x-axis, my tip of the pencil going in the x, positive x direction, so we don't need to add negative sign. However, let's take a look at here. If we were trying to project to the y-axis here, you can see your arrow actually going to the negative direction of the y. So that's why it's, it must be negative. Then what is the value for this red dash line? It will be the blue line here, multiply sine 30, right? So the size, the length of the blue line is going to be 600 for over 5, sine 30 degree. So that's a J hat. Okay, so now let's take a look at the I hat. What is the Z component here? That's going to be the blue dash line here. So how much is that? 600, 3 over 5. That's going to be the K hat.
So this is called a double projection because, some, because sometimes if we didn't have the angle directly to the axis, then you have to project to the plane first. And then you are going to multiply another, use another angle so that you can project to axis. So which means we need to project twice. That's why it's called a double projection. So now let's take a look if we were trying to write the F2 in the vector form, are we going to do the double projection? Take a look at here. The F2 is actually in the YZ plane. So which means we had a zero I hat. And then what is the Y components of the F2 here? From the picture you can see that's going to be 450 multiply cosine 45. And then what is the Z components? That's going to be this line here. So that's 450 sine 45, the P hat. 